everyone, my name is Debbie. And normally I do videos about cooking, about healthy food, healthy eating, tips and information around food. But today I thought I would share part of my life with you outside of food and what I normally do in my videos. I have a new hide bag here for my bagpipes. And for the first time, I'm going to season it, which means I'm going to make it airtight. Never done this before. So if you are looking for a video on how to season a hide pipe bag, this is not the video for you because I'm doing it for the first time based on information I got from people who know what they're doing. We will see what happens. But if you'd like to learn more about my life and some of the things I do when I'm not cooking and not giving you videos with tips and information around food and healthy living, then stay for the video and click the subscribe button while you're at it. But if you do want videos on how to season a pipe bag, check out the channels of Matt Willis or some of the uh, bagpipe manufacturers or other people who really know what they're doing because that's not me. So I decided to try a hide bag for the first time. This is leather. I apologize to the cows out there, but I have my reasons for going with a hide bag and I will explain them as we go through this process. And one of the things you have to do is you have to fill it with this liquid called seasoning to make it airtight because these bags are sewn. So you've got stitching here, you've got a seam, even though the seam is covered, and it's possible that the bag leaks. And I know it's not airtight because I played it yesterday. So yesterday I went to piping school. I had tried to tie my, this is my uh, stock that holds my chanter, which is the piece of the bagpipe that plays the melody. And uh, if let me know if you can hear me. I think you should be able to hear me. All my settings are correct, but if there's a problem, let me know. Uh, and um, I watched a couple of videos on how to do it, but still it wasn't airtight. So yesterday I had the fellow who runs the piping school in Montreal where I live show me how to do it. He did it for me. And it is airtight now, but I did play this bag last night and uh, it is leaking air a little bit from other places, probably from the seams. So we're going to start. So first thing I have to do is I have to take these plugs and I have to plug all these other stocks. And let me tell you what they are. So this is for the chanter, which is the melody pipe. This is for the blow pipe. And these three here are for, here we go. These three <laughs> here are for the drones. And the drones are the three tubes that stick up on your shoulder. So this longer one is for the bass drone, which is the long one, which sticks up right here. And then the two tenor drones. So we're gonna plug all of this. And we're gonna plug all these holes except for one with these plugs. And I'm gonna put them in tight because I don't want an accident. I don't want seasoning spilling out. Uh, oh. everyone so I apologize for that uh, I had put my keyboard on my mouse in front of my computer which I'm using to record and I put newspaper on top and I just accidentally touched something with the backpipe when I put it down and everything disappeared for a minute so so let's continue so yeah so so this bag it's a hide bag but I did get it with grommets because I didn't want to have to make holes and tie in everything. And I did get it with a zipper. And here I am putting in my plugs and my zipper's open. 
right? So it's like not a good recipe for having the seasoning stay in the bag. All right. Oh, close the zipper. Here we go. And by the way, shout out to Jack Lee, and I will tell you more about Jack Lee. This is a Lee and Sons bag. And I tried one in 2019, and it was so comfortable. And as I do the seasoning, I'll talk more about my bagpipe journey, which you could also call it my bagpipe struggle. Okay, for now, I'm going to plug the bowl pipe, but I will be taking it out later so I can blow up the bag. I'm going to pour the seasoning in through. That's my dishwasher. It will stop making noise in a minute. So you actually have to heat this in the microwave because it's kind of like solid before you heat it. It says about a half a bottle. Hopefully nothing's going to pop out or I'll have a big mess. I'm going to, maybe I should pour it in. Well, I don't know. I guess I'll pour it in through the chanter stock. Okay, half a bottle. That's not quite half a bottle. They say for a new bag, you should pour half a bottle. Woo! Stir it up a bit. Okay, here we go. And there actually is a drink called bagpipe seasoning, which I think is made with rum. It's actually really good and all kinds of nutmeg and other stuff. And once a year, usually at Christmas, we have it. Of course, with the pandemic, everything's a bit different, but okay, that's half a bottle. Let's cap this for now. And so the first thing is just to kind of let it roll around inside. I can feel the liquid keeping this up, hoping none of these corks pop out. Just kind of trying to do this. Okay, this whole process is supposed to be 15 minutes. So it's 1026. Uh, and I'm going to cork the chanter. And I really hope it's not coming out when I blow the bag up. Then you're supposed to blow the bag up because the air is going to force the seasoning into the seams, right? So here, I'll just roll it around a bit more. Like I said, oh, I heard it go whoop, whoop. I guess that's a good sound. And I really hope these parts don't pop out when I put them under pressure because we will have a horrid mess. I've got newspaper on the floor, I've got newspaper here. I'm still in my jogging clothes and I have my uh, Scottish apron. You may have noticed I got this from Scotland years ago, but uh, I still don't want seasoning everywhere, especially on my computer, which is right here. So I'm gonna make sure these guys are nice and tight. Um, so, okay, I think these guys are tight. I am going to actually, oh, I didn't need to make that one tight. This is the one I want to make tight. This one. This is the one I want to take out. Okay, I'm going to, huh. There's no liquid on there, so I don't know what. Okay, this is my blowpipe, so I can put air in here. And we'll see what happens. I'm going to do it slowly, because I really don't want anything popping out. I'll show, I can show you the bag maybe inflating. I'm not going to inflate it too much because I'm really worried about uh, the corks popping. So but I'm going to take a chance and turn it upside down. I do want all the seams around these three drone stocks uh, to uh, get uh, seasoning in them. So I'm going to hold it like this for a bit. So why did I make the decision to play the bagpipes? I have asked myself that question many times with frustration. And just like, will I ever play the bagpipes? Because it's been a long journey. Now let's get some in the seam. Look at this. Pretty funny looking, eh? And this is a small bag. This is the smallest one that Lee and Sons makes. It's an extra small. Looks pretty big to me, but it's the smallest one. Okay, let's do this. Because, well, I do have uh, Scottish origins and Welsh origins, and my name, Esplin, is actually a Scottish name, even though it doesn't sound Scottish. 
my ancestors are from Scotland and Wales. But also, I just think bagpipe music is totally fascinating. And I think the instrument is totally fascinating. And I've never shied away from a challenge. So, however, I didn't realize what a challenge it would be either. I thought, I play flute, I play recorder, I play guitar, I play piano, I play hand percussion, I play fife, I play penny whistle, I play clarinet a little bit. Like, how hard can it be, right? Yeah, well, ignorance is bliss. Oh. Ignorance is bliss. And uh, I was definitely ignorant about how hard it is to play the bagpipes. Like any musical instrument, it requires a lot of practice because precision is the key to playing an instrument well. And you only get precision with practice. But what makes the bagpipes harder, it's just, it's such a physical instrument and the Great Highland Bagpipes, which is what this is part of, which is the standard bagpipes you hear with bagpipe bands. It's kind of like a fun rocking motion. This is kind of fun, actually, you know? Well, I'm on the ocean and I'm in a boat. Uh, it's a very physical instrument. It's a large instrument, and it's very physical. And the smaller your stature, the more important it is that you actually get a bagpipe that is properly fitted to your physique. And that's why I invested in this bag. So I'll talk about the bags I've had now. So I've been on bagpipes for five years and I'm still struggling. <laughs> I'm five foot two, I'm a small female, um, which is part of it. Doesn't mean women can't play the bagpipes, doesn't mean children can't play the bagpipes. It just means that getting a bag fitted to you can be harder because you know what, it's, the air's not really going out very much. I think we might be getting somewhere with the air tightness. Um, it's just more challenging because a lot of people don't have experience fitting pipes to a smaller frame. And uh, it's also, it's hard to get the size of bag you need and the, sh the other stuff you need, the short blow pipe. Well, that's not hard to get anymore, but. So my first, well, I'll talk about this set of bagpipes, which I got in 2015. I think it was August, so five years, um, six years, <laughs> 2016, five years. They came with a synthetic bag. I'm like, I just want an expensive bag, smallest bag I could get. But it was like having a bellows under my arm. And it was really, it was really hard to keep a steady pressure. And it would force my arm out so much it hurt my shoulder. So I decided, and let's turn this up again like this, uh, to switch to a Ross bag, which is a synthetic bag with a suede outer uh, cover. And it was much better. It was much less like a balloon or a bellows, but still, my arm would still be doing kind of like, mm, and it was really hard to keep a steady pressure. So I just decided, I make the decision. Now, I'm kind of, I still work part-time, but I'm moving into semi-retirement. It's like, when I started learning on the chanter, I was working in a job with long hours. I was doing science courses at night. And then I became a grandmother not long after. So like I had a busy life. So I just said, I'm going to learn the bagpipes. Whatever pace it takes is fine. However slow it takes, it's fine. I give it the time I have, which wasn't much to practice. And if it takes me years, that's okay. And so that was the decision I made then. But now I have more time. And I decided now is the time when I really have to get serious and start really getting up into joining a band and playing well. I can play the bagpipes, but I'm not satisfied with my playing. And one of the things I noticed that I really struggled with was when I did play with my all my drones, my three drones open, having steady pressure. Why is steady pressure important? Because, just give me a sec. Because if you don't have steady pressure, you don't have steady pitch. And if you don't have steady pitch, your drones go flat, or sharp and your chanter goes flat or sharp. So even if you're playing with bagpipes that are two, if your pressure is not steady, you go flat or sharp, sharp and it sounds awful. So in order to really play the instrument well and sound well, even if you don't play fast and even if you don't have all your embellishments like you know a really experienced piper would have, but if you play with steady pitch, it will be pleasant to listen to.
And if you don't, it won't, because it comes into it. I'll sound like dying animals, basically, or animals in pain. Really awful. So um, we are at almost 10 minutes now. So, uh, <clears throat> and actually, so far, things are going well. Fingers crossed. So I decided, even though there was nothing wrong with my Ross bag and I'm keeping it as a backup bag, I decided I'm going to invest in this bag. I'm going to get serious and uh, give this instrument the time I want to give it now so that I can become the play at the level I want to play at. I had a chance to try this bag in 2019. I went to music camp for the first time in my life. It was a one week camp on a lake in rural Ontario at a college. It was amazing. It was such a beautiful setting. And we we're about 80 or 90 people with the teachers and the students. We lived in the dormitories, which were comfortable. The food was great. And we had lessons every day. We had 30 hours of instruction over five days and seminars at night. And also it was in Ontario. So I think I was the only person from Quebec. And then there was one or two people from the Maritimes and one or two people from out West in Canada and a couple of people from the US. But most of the people there were from uh, Ontario. It was an amazing opportunity. Let's get some in here to, uh, I don't think I've tackled, I want to really get a chance to settle in. It was an amazing learning opportunity. And during that time, one of the teachers was Jack Lee. All four teachers were excellent, excellent. Ken Eller, Bruce Gandy, Jack Lee, and uh, there's one more guy, and he was so good, and I can't remember his name. He plays with a band in Ireland that has won the worlds, and he lives in Toronto, and he was amazing too. And I'm so sorry I forgot your name. <laughs> anyway, so, and I also had a 30 minute private lesson with Jack Lee. I heard it go into the stock there, um, and uh, but I want to kind of get this part too. So he uh, said to me, I want to focus on trying to get the pipes comfortable for you and help you play them. Because I, I mean, I, I have in the five years I've been on the pipes, I have gotten to the point where I can play with all three drones unplugged, but not with steady pressure and not without a huge amount of, you know, like, playing for five or six minutes and I was had to take a break. Now in bagpipe land, that's pretty normal. It's considered a marathon to play for 20 minutes nonstop because the instrument is so demanding. Now there are people that do it like Jack Lee, but for the majority of amateur pipers like me, you know, 20 minutes nonstop is a marathon, even for professionals, but you know, it's, uh, it's uh, so it's such a demanding instrument. So, we worked on that and I came out of that 30 minute class and I'm going to cry. I was crying my eyes out. I was bawling and I came out and the uh, girl who organized the school and her helpers, they saw me crying and they thought something was wrong and they were very upset. And I told them, no, I am just crying with relief because it's not me. It's the pipes. At that point I had spent four years or three years, um, Four, four years, four, three years, thinking it was me. And I just wasn't trying hard enough. I just didn't practice consistently enough. It was me. But I was practicing and I was trying and it still it wasn't enough. And one of the, is the thing that I really learned from that, which was really amazing, was that like Jack Lee, he, uh, he's a grade one piper. He's won the world several times. Check him out. He is an amazing piper. He also has an amazing uh, uh, website. He does a ton of P-Brock. And uh, he also makes these bags and he makes bagpipes. And he used to be the pipe major of the Simon Fraser University Pipe Band, which has also won the world. And the Simon Fraser University Pipe Band also has a theater band with children and adolescents in it. And so he, he was pipe major of that band for 20 or 30 years. And he learned how to fit bags to small people like children and adolescents. So he has a lot of experience on how to help a small frame person like me uh, 
get comfortable. And what he said to me was that if the pipes don't fit you and if they're not comfortable for you, then you're not going to play and you're not going to enjoy it. And so they have to fit you and they have to be comfortable. And so that's why I decided I'm investing in this bag because when I was at that camp, I had the opportunity to um, try this bag. It was so comfortable. And when I put it under my arm, like when I'm playing it, I'm not going to do it now, but when I put it under my arm and I'm playing it, the bag doesn't move. So I can keep a steady pressure on the bag. And I was just like, okay, I have to do this. So that's why I ended up going for a hide bag. And if you're vegan, I know you won't be happy with my decision, but the other alternatives that are not made with animal hide, now this is cow, it's not sheep or goat, uh, are just not viable for me. Traditionally, pipe bags were made of sheep's sheepskin. But, uh, okay, so we're almost at 15 minutes. I'm going to just add a little bit more air. And uh, just do this a bit more. And so, you know, to, if you are a piper, if you are a small framed piper, female or male or child out there and you're struggling, Listen to Jack Lee, who said, the pipes have to fit you. They have to be comfortable. And once they're comfortable, then, of course, you have to put in the time to practice. Yes, and the discipline to do it consistently. But if they're not comfortable, it's going to be such a struggle, and they're going to hate it. And who wants to play a musical instrument that they hate playing? So this year, I went to virtual bike, uh, pipe camp. Uh, it was done over Zoom, and uh, it was amazing, too. Great teachers, and um, so if you play a musical instrument and you've never been to music camp and you want to take your instrument seriously, I highly recommend it. Music camp is a lot of fun at any age. <clears throat> so we are at 15 minutes, which is the time they say you should do this for. So let me just do this one more time. Let me just rock it back and forth this way too, because I've got a seam here. I don't know if I actually got that seam that much. And uh, so let it sit there for a minute. So part of having a healthy life is having also hobbies that you like to do. And playing musical instruments is one of my hobbies. And uh, as you, if you listen to me earlier, I, in my lifetime, I've played quite a few. And I actually got pretty good on classical guitar, rhythm guitar, piano. I was quite good as well. Uh, and hand percussion and singing. But I don't do any of that now. The flute is my first instrument. I was eight when I started learning the flute. I was lucky enough to have music class in school. We actually, this was in the U.S. at that time. Whoops, that's okay. There's a, uh, we actually had uh, an orchestra in my school. So I learned the flute starting from age eight, and the flute is my first love. And as an adult, I played the flute off and on, and then 16, 11 years ago, no, more than that, 16 years ago, I, as my children were older and I had more, a bit more time, I joined a concert band, and I've been playing flute ever since on a regular basis. So I couldn't give up the flute when I started the bagpipes, but because this instrument requires so much practice and is so demanding, I did have to give up all the other stuff, the guitar and the piano, which I was really hoping. I was trying to get my piano skills back at that time, but I had to give it up. So uh, that's the story of that. Okay, so I think probably this guy, hopefully this is good. We're actually going to try these in a minute now. Okay, so now I'm going to go here, and I'm just because I didn't actually bring this one like this, I don't think. I'm just going to do this, and then I'm just going to do this, and then, uh, all right. So now I'm going to uh, take out the blowpipe. I'm going to plug this up, and uh, so you can hear the air coming out. I'm told that you can actually reuse the seasoning. I guess I'm going to put it back in the same bottle. 
because I don't know what kind of waddle it needs to be in otherwise. Um, okay. So now I'm going to take this thing out. So it's actually been almost 20 minutes, 19 minutes. So hopefully that's enough. Yeah, I can see there's some seasoning on the plug. So that means it did get all the way down. I'm going to try to pour it out without making a mess. And uh, we will see what happens. Oh. Is it coming out? <laughs> Maybe there's nothing to come out. <laughs> there's nothing coming out. I go, oh, there it is. Oh, it's green. Oh, my God, it's green. Oh, it's, oh, that's because of the blue dye of the leather. That's okay. All right, there's some coming out. Well, hopefully I haven't messed up messed up the rest of the seasoning by uh, see if you can see it coming out. It's got the dye of the leather. Anyway, okay, we'll just let that drip for a minute. <laughs> I don't really want liquid in there running around. Okay, it's starting to. Oh, it's still dripping. Okay, not so much now. Well, I'm glad I put the newspaper down. That was a wise uh, precaution. But while we wait for it to drip, I'll like, actually explain how the bagpipes work. And the bagpipes are one of the oldest wind instruments in the world. I think a single pipe with a few holes for blowing is probably older, but the bagpipes are definitely one of the oldest. And every part of the world has their version of bagpipes. It's not, uh, it's not just in Scotland, everywhere, every part of the world. Now, sometimes it's a bag with one tube coming out, one drone and one melody pipe. Sometimes it's two drones. Sometimes it's air blown with your mouth. Sometimes it's a bellows. There's all different sizes, all different kinds. But <laughs> guys, taking forever. Oh my gosh, this is my arm's getting tired. Uh, I'm just going. Uh, oh god, now I just let it drip on the newspaper. Uh, oh, oh. I'll close the bottle. I'm gonna have to move the newspaper before I put this down. Let me just see if it needs to drip a bit more. Shake it. There we go. Try to get everything out. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, so, so that makes it very interesting that every part of the world, let's do this now, has a history of some form of bagpipe. And now in modern days, the Great Highland Bagpipe, which is what you see here, is, uh, I'm just going to put this on the floor. Uh, okay, I still got some newspaper here. All right. uh, the Great Highland Bagpipe uh, is uh, actually played all around the world. There are pipe bands all around the world every country of any nationality, not just Scotland, plays the Great Highland Bagpipe and has uh, pipe bands. So that makes it very interesting as well. <sighs> okay, my thing is, so now what I'm gonna do, oh, actually I should, this bottom is a bit wet. I'm gonna clean it up because I don't want my counter. I don't think this stuff is sticky, but I, I wasn't sure what the consistency was going to be like. I didn't, wasn't sure how gooey it would be. All right, so I'm going to put my blowpipe back in, and uh, I'm going to uh, actually no. Before I put the blowpipe, yeah, I'm going to put the blowpipe pipe back in, and I'm going to do the air test now. Let's just see how tight it is. Airtight. Let's see what happens. Well, it helps if you have all the holes plugged. You want to blow this up? It helps. Okay. 
No, I'm going to blow hard, put it under pressure. I'm going to get my bull pike a bit more organized, though. Better direction. Okay, it's under pressure. Okay. And let's see how long does it stay. This is the air test. Of course, you can sometimes put pressure on it to see, but it should stay like this at least a couple of minutes without getting significantly soft. If it starts to get really soft, it means you still have a leak somewhere. And so far, it is getting a bit soft here. I can feel it here getting a bit soft. So maybe there's a bit of a leak still here. Um, and because this is a new bag, it sometimes happens you have to do this whole thing all over again. And I really didn't focus too much on getting these seams uh, around the blowpipe uh, wet. Actually, I just realized that now, so that might be why. But back here, it's still solid. So just try blowing it up again. Let's see. Uh, actually, I'm going to blow it up again and time it. You know what? Even when I blow it up, it's still soft here, but not here. So pretty airtight. I think I got to do it again and do this, but I will not do it again on camera now. I have other stuff I have to do. And uh, I do want to just play it with the chanter and see how it feels compared to yesterday when I played it. Because yesterday it was hard to play unseasoned. Playing an unseasoned bag, that was hard. <laughs> oh. Okay. So we're... I think it's pretty airtight, except for a little bit around here. I will do this again, but yeah, I'm quite pleased so far with the result. It actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, and I was really concerned about a big explosion of seasoning everywhere, and that didn't happen. So I'm quite pleased. All right, enough of the blow test, enough of the bag test. I know I have to do it again. That's all I need to know. A quick, quick scale so you can hear it. And I also just want to see if it's easier than yesterday, because in theory, it shouldn't be so hard to play because the bag is more airtight. Hang on, get that out of the way. Just warm the reed up a bit. By the way, let me uh, show you this reed. This is the chanter reed, and it's a double reed. I know you probably can't see it, but... Uh, it's got two two blades, like the elbow has a double reed. And the, there's one other instrument. I think it's the bassoon is also a double reed instrument. And then inside the drums, stocks here, you each have another reed. But those are single reeds. So the bagpipe is actually a four reed instrument. Okay. So now this will be a bit loud, but it won't be super loud because I don't have my drums connected. And they're not ready to play anyway. They need maintenance as well. Let's just give it a quick blow. See what happens. Okay, my reed is dry, so it's hard. I played it last night, so in theory, I should be able to play it now. However, the thing I'm really pleased about, my arm doesn't move at all. Once the bag is inflated, it stays at exactly the same way. And uh, so I'm very pleased, very pleased. If you watch this in the replay, 
I hope you enjoy it. A little bit of my bagpipe journey shared with you in this one. I am going to go now because I have things I need to do. And uh, practicing the pipes being one of them. Everybody have a good day. Put a smile on your face. Eat good, healthy food. Find a hobby. If you don't have a hobby you love, find a hobby you love and do it because it will feed your soul and it will help you live a happy, healthy life. Bye for now, everyone. And subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to my channel. And the next video will be about food like usual. But once in a while, I'll share something from my life that isn't my food life. Take care. Bye.